afternoon all. It's approaching the evening here in the UK. I thought uh, I haven't covered many traps in my uh, video repertoire. Uh, we've covered opening theories, we've covered puzzles, obviously we've done loads and loads of live commentary games. But I thought, you know, approaching one million views on the channel, um, thank you very much all of you uh, for coming to you know check out my videos. I'm going to hopefully carry on doing quite a few more. But uh, let's let's look at traps as well. So really often um, the thing that puts me off playing for traps is, is when they damage your position. But sometimes you know they don't. You can safely play a trap and still have a position uh, you know even if the opponent doesn't uh, fall in line with the trap. And um, I was checking out actually a, a list of traps on wiki and I think one of the more relevant ones especially for those following the live commentary videos is in the Sicilian defense the Morris Smith Gambit which I've been playing a lot. Now let's make sure that none of you uh, fall into this trap or if you want to try and play it as black uh, to trap the person playing the Morris Smith Gambit. So the Morris Smith is this C3 move accelerating White's development, avoiding all the, um, the theory of the Sicilian defense and you're just trying to get your pieces out rapidly. So black takes and now black plays knight c6. Nothing too trappy it seems at the moment with knight c6. Um, it has got though a point uh, with, with black's next move, next few moves, that the knight is, is um, potentially going to come into d4 to set up the trap later. Let's not get ahead of ourselves too much though. So e6, now bishop c4. And usually when I play the Morris Smith, I'm usually aiming to get you know this other bishop there to castle to connect the rooks, you know, after queen e2. I think I picked this up from um from someone's coaching actually uh once from Andrew Martin. Uh they were using this system effectively in Blitz. Um and I just ad adopted it. It was a very comfortable idea that all you do, it, it just simplifies playing against the Sicilian because all you do really is just casting, connecting with It just sounds so logical. And then you've got this target on d6 or the d file. And also, you know, if your rooks are on c1 and d1, the Morris Smith, you know, is a comfortable weapon to play. Uh, so queen c7. Now this is a bit unusual. So what is, is that crafty queen doing on this diagonal? Let's not lift up the queen. Sorry, the alt key in chess space. It's eyeing this this square. Um, it's also um, you know potentially eyeing the bishop, but that's not the main point. The main point is this diagonal. Look at that. It's coming down, putting pressure on that diagonal immediately. Uh, so queen e2, which adds a bit of coziness to the white position, because the bishop's now protected in case there is something involving the knight moving and exposing an attack on the bishop. Knight f6. And now white, um, perhaps unwisely now, I wouldn't do this uh, in a hurry um, now, knowing the trap, uh, but white castle, so it seems, okay, we're going to get into that routine. It's been a bit interrupted because there's no bishop f4, so the bishop might have to go to g5, but that's fine, you might say, is it could come then later to h4 to g3. Again, a tempo on that pesky queen over there on c7, but black now lunges another knight with you know knight g4 and the first you know reaction is to chase the knight away uh, naturally um, you know maybe you're thinking oh if I chase the knight away the knight could go to e5 fine but then you know maybe I can just retreat the bishop and later take and then maybe f4 and then f5 you know f4 with tempo so that will all be fine but now here my chess friends, please don't play h3. <laughs> if you haven't seen this trap, you'll be enlightened a bit by this video and hopefully you can avoid it. If you do reach this position, uh, so you've castled and you didn't play h3 to stop it, um, well, we'll discuss that in a bit, but let's look at the real horror. So you play h3 and you've been trapped, I'm afraid, because can you spot black's next move? I'll give you 10 seconds starting from now. Okay, unfortunately black doesn't need to uh, retreat the knight. Black doesn't even need to speculatively uh, give up uh, this knight to try and rip open the h file. Although that might be dangerous as well if you take and then, you know, black gets that uh, coordination of queen and rook. 
No, but black actually plays this killer blow, knight d4. And all of a sudden, these two knights are really uh, coordinating in a devastating way to undermine this h2 square. So, if you play knight takes d4, there's queen h2 mate. Unpleasant, yes. Uh, so what can you do? Um, you know, say you move your queen, then I wonder if you can spot the forcing uh, continuation. If I give you five seconds. Okay, h2 is weak. You take on f3 to even make it even weaker. So after queen takes or pawn takes, the queen comes in to h2 again, delivering mate. So this is a pretty devastating move. Um, you may want to try and be the trap, uh, the person trying to trap the guy from the white side. Let's let's see if you're black, just to get a feel from black's perspective on this trap. So you're taking the pawn, you're cheekily in this position um, here, playing queen c7 after e6 was played. So e6 is necessary first because you don't want to have to have to face knight d5. You don't want to put your queen straight away to c7 because knight d5 for example. So e6 but now queen c7 as though you might be threatening something on the bishop. So white casually protects the bishop. Knight f6. You haven't yet committed um, this pawn or this bishop. After castles, aha! You can now play this lunging knight move, knight g4. And if you're very lucky, the opponent, the unsuspecting poor opponent, plays h3 and then you play the move knight d4. So, <laughs> it's uh, an annoying uh, thing to play against. And um, let's take White's perspective again. And I want to ask, or rather answer the question, how would you um, avoid, you know, in a comfortable way, this trap without having to compromise your position? Well, here after knight f6, you could just play the move h3 to stop all this knight g4 stuff. That might be good position as well, because knight g4 to e5 might be a good positional move at some point anyway. Um, with the, with the the light squared bishop there, you know it's it's not too devastating. Um, you know this h3, you know it's difficult for the bishop to sacrifice anytime soon on h3 or for black to arrange an attack. Black's still behind in development fundamentally. And also if you if you do play h3 here, then later, you know, bishop g5 to h4 to g3, you might be winning a tempo on that queen. So in that respect, you know, black's position is slightly compromised because maybe the queen it isn't in an ideal position on c7. It's tactically orientated for this queen h2 mate idea. So that's one thing. Now say you're in a blitz game though, I'll show you something else. Um, in this position, okay, you've suddenly realized, blimey, I can't play h3. Okay, you can salvage the position by shielding your h2 pawn if you play the move g3, but you are compromising your position a bit. But, you know, you're saving the major disasters here, so there's no knight d4s, you've solved the h2 problem, but you've slightly weakened your knight squares. It's not ideal. You know, black can maybe justify that knight by playing knight e5, hitting the bishop. But uh, this this is not a lost position by far. You've just weakened a few squares, but you've still got, you know, a lead in development. You can still try and gain a tempo on the black queen later. So it's not a major disaster, but it's not something you really want to play, this g3 move. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. And... Um, Please leave any comments or questions on YouTube. Thanks very much.